Hey Gain, it's Squill, and of Adventure Time's wide cast of characters, Lemon Grab is by far one of the most contentious. He's a character that's very intentionally off-putting, in ways some may find funny, while others may find insufferable. Not to mention having a problematic voice actor, whom I'll discuss more later on in the video. But is there more to Lemon Grab than just an obnoxious voice? Is there a layered and nuanced character within him? That's what I plan on finding out today, as we deep dive into Lemon Grab's arc on Adventure Time. Lemon Grab's first ever appearance is in Season 3's Too Young, a direct follow-up to last season's Mortal Recoil, in which PB is reverted to a 13-year-old. PB is deemed not old enough to be ruler of the kingdom, and Lemon Grab takes her place. Interestingly enough, PB refers to Lemon Grab in this episode as her first ever experiment gone wrong. However, within the context of the wider series, we know that this is not the case at all. Although this episode serves as Lemon Grab's introduction, he's not really the main focus of this story. This is primarily a PB and Finn focused episode, with Lemon Grab mostly serving as an obstacle to get in their way. But what we do learn about Lemon Grab from this episode is that he is very much an authoritarian type quick to throw people in the dungeon if they even mildly disobey him. We also learn that he is highly emotionally unstable, being quick to anger and other extreme emotions. At the end of the episode, PB turns 18 again, kicking Lemon Grab out of her kingdom. Lemon Grab makes his grand return in Season 4's You Made Me, this time with much more emphasis put on his mental state. Upon being exiled from the kingdom, Lemon Grab has begun stalking the candy people at night. This story explores Lemon Grab's loneliness, as he has no people to watch over like PB. Lemon Grab is just so strange and off-putting that nobody quite understands him. And so he's left isolated from the world around him. While Lemon Grab is definitely emotionally unstable, it is a little negligent of PB to let his insanity build to this point. Perhaps if PB had talked to Lemon Grab at an earlier point, he would be capable of showing compassion for others. Instead, when the pub gang are sent to be his citizens, he essentially tortures the trio for disobeying him. Lemon Grab has decided that because the world doesn't understand him, he doesn't have to show any empathy for anyone back. As a solution, PB creates a second Lemon Grab to accompany the first one. A smart solution on paper, seeing as the only person capable of understanding Lemon Grab is Lemon Grab. But in the long term, this decision will have disastrous consequences. One last thing to note about this episode is that this is our first time seeing Castle Lemon Grab. The place is predictably very empty feeling, adding to Lemon Grab's own feelings of isolation. But inside many of the empty rooms are Catcher's Mitts, a symbolic image that will come up again later. But with that, we now get to Season 5, the season with far and away the most amount of Lemon Grab. The majority of his arc takes place within this season. Despite this, Lemon Grab's first appearance this season in Mystery Dungeon is his only major role that doesn't really contribute to his arc in any way. In fact, it kinda actively contradicts it, but we'll get to that in a minute. In this episode, Lemon Grab is placed in a dungeon with Ice King, Tree Trunks, Nectar, and Shelby. This is a very fun appearance for Lemon Grab, as we get to see him bounce off of characters outside of his usual sphere. You know, he's a very PB-centric character, so he doesn't often get to interact with characters outside of her and Finn. It's fun seeing him get into arguments with Tree Trunks, or want to cannibalize the Ice King. He sort of acts as the Agent of Chaos in this group. The wild card, if you will. That scene where he eats the pie directly out of a rat's mouth is so delightfully disturbing. But for as much as I love this episode, it does, admittedly, create a pretty big continuity error. As in the episode directly following Mystery Dungeon, All Your Fault, both Lemon Grabs are presented as extremely skinny and malnourished, and it's implied that they've been this way for at least a few months. This can only mean one of two things. Either there is a massive time jump between Mystery Dungeon and All Your Fault, 
Or more likely, that this episode was intended to air after all your fault. What's funny is that this isn't even the only continuity error created by this episode. As three episodes later in Bad Little Boy, Ice King pledges to find a way to meet Fiona and Cake. And Mystery Dungeon is very clearly his attempt to do so. Man, who'd have thought one little episode being out of order could create so many issues? But as previously mentioned, Lemon Grab's next appearance would be in the following episode, All Your Fault. Here, it's revealed that during the events of You Made Me, when PB was creating Lemon Grab 2, that she accidentally left behind the formula for creating Candy Life. The Lemon Grabs use this formula, as well as the candy seeds that PB left them, to create new Lemon Life. I really like the way the story expands on Lemon Grab's conflict back in You Made Me. There, he felt isolated because he didn't have any people to rule over. So, instead of stalking the candy citizens, he finds the opportunity to create people of his own. He really just wants to be like PB, to be loved and respected by a group of people. But what he doesn't realize is that PB earned that love and respect by taking care of her people. They don't just love her because she's their ruler. And so, while the Lemon Grabs create new citizens, they fail to feed or nurture them. This is until the two send Lemon John to steal all of the candy from the Candy Kingdom. Jake punches Lemon John's heart, forcing him to learn empathy for other people. He breaks himself down into lemon candy so the lemon people can be fed without hurting the candy people. The story ends with PB erasing the Candy Life formula out of the Lemon Grabs' heads. Jake asks PB why she doesn't just change their hearts like they did with Lemon John. To which PB claims that their hearts are fine, they're just like this. I think what this line means is that PB mostly tries to be hands-off in terms of how she handles the lemon grabs. You know, she'll send food and stuff, but she won't majorly involve herself in their affairs unless she has to. Now, considering everything that goes down with Lemon Grab later on this season, you could probably argue that this was a case where PB should have been involved. I guess from her perspective, now that the Lemon people have food, there's not really much of an issue anymore. After all, PB has her own kingdom she's busy with. Next time we see Lemon Grab is in his one and only Grable segment in another five more short Grables. In this segment, the two Lemon Grabs are seen playing with a doll they call Lemon Sweet. The two are no longer capable of creating life for themselves, so this is the next best thing. The Lemon Grabs argue over what the doll should do, resulting in it breaking. The segment abruptly ends with Lemon Grab 1 cannibalizing Lemon Grab 2. What this short represents is the Lemon Grab's desire for control. Obviously, Lemon Sweets is just a doll. However, the Lemon Grabs see it the same way they'd see one of their own citizens. They even refer to it as their son. They want to control people's actions like they would a doll. So when Lemon Grab 1 attempts to eat Lemon Grab 2, that's him taking control back from his brother. And we will see the ramifications of this in Too Old. As we can see, Lemon Grab 2 has clearly survived Lemon Grab 1's attempt at cannibalization, but only barely, as he is missing half of his face and everything below his torso. And as for Lemon Grab 1, well, you all can see for yourselves. Back in All Your Fault, the two Lemon Grabs seem to be on a pretty even level as far as leadership goes. But here, it's pretty easy to see that Lemon Grab 1 has all the power. And he uses that power to make Castle Lemon Grab more authoritarian, forcing his people to do as he pleases and, much like in Too Young, throwing them in the dungeon if they disobey him. This includes Lemon Hope, who was imprisoned for simply playing the harp. Lemon Grab 2 frees Lemon Hope, PB, and Finn, leading to Lemon Grab 1, um, finishing the job. The episode ends with PB taking Lemon Hope back to the Candy Kingdom. The next time we see Lemon Grab in Lemon Hope's titular two-parter, he has gone full totalitarian forcing the citizens to serve him and him alone, much to their own suffering. Nobody is allowed out of Castle Lemon Grab, and thanks to all the pacts and treaties, nobody is allowed in. After a long journey, Lemon Hope returns to his home to face Lemon Grab. With the power of his harp, Lemon Hope is able to destroy Lemon Grab 1, with Lemon Grab 2 inside of him. 
PB is able to stitch the two Lemon Grabs back together, thankfully, creating Lemon Grab 3, a combination of the two Lemon Grabs. And we are acquainted with Lemon Grab 3 in Season 6's The Mountain. Here we get a much more subdued Lemon Grab, one who's just a little less neurotic than the Lemon Grab we're familiar with. And this can be seen in the society he's cultivated. Still very orderly, but in a way that's meant to benefit all of his citizens and not just Lemon Grab. Closer to a cult than a dictatorship. Lemon Grab's entire journey through the Mountain of Matthew in this episode centers around him coming to terms with who he is. When Lemon Grab first enters the mountain, he is presented with three paths. The path on the right shows the two Lemon Grabs he's comprised of playing with Lemon Sweets, very similar to the scene in another five more short Grables. This path represents Lemon Grab's past and is the one he chooses. The path in the middle shows Lemon Hope become the new Earl of Lemon Grab. This path represents his fear, that being of losing his power and control. But the path I find to be the most interesting is the one on the left. This shows PB wanting to play catch with Lemon Grab with the catcher's mitt and to relate to him. This clearly represents Lemon Grab's desires. Now, if we think back to the empty rooms full of catcher's mitts we saw back in You Made Me, then this paints a pretty interesting picture of what Lemon Grab's always wanted. He wants PB to love and understand him, the same way she understands the needs of her people. And the way this is framed, PB wanting to play catch with Lemon Grab, is very reminiscent of a father and son. This shows that Lemon Grab still views PB as a parent of sorts. But unlike the rest of her citizens, she never showed Lemon Grab the love that a child needs. And it's because he never received that love that Lemon Grab views himself as Grease. When Lemon Grab reaches Matthew himself, he is presented with two options. The first is to join Matthew, thus adding himself to his mass. And the second is to destroy Matthew. Lemon Grab chooses the latter, freeing all of the people who became a part of Matthew. I think Matthew in this episode represents Lemon Grab's own feelings towards himself, as the two of them are both depicted as cult leaders. So when Lemon Grab destroys Matthew, he's destroying the parts of himself that he sees as Grease. Or something. Honestly, there's probably a million ways you can interpret this episode. It's easily one of the most confusing of the entire show. But point aside, Lemon Grab's appearances became incredibly sparse after this episode. He is seen on a date with LSP in Normal Man, and this dynamic is continued when the two kiss and come along with me. Frankly, these two deserve each other. He is also seen as Lemon Pink in the Elements miniseries. He was inside the lemon. Funnily enough, Lemon Grab's biggest role after the mountain would be in the Minecraft crossover Diamonds and Lemons. Here he has a subplot about trying to make a lemon tree. It's pretty funny, but I don't really have much else to say about it. Come Along With Me would be the last time the character was ever voiced by Justin Roiland. Trigger warning for discussion of abuse and sexual harassment. Near the start of 2023, voice of Lemon Grab and co-creator of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, was charged for domestic abuse against an ex-partner. Around the same time, he was also being called out for having inappropriate conversations with underage teenagers. The man was basically blacklisted from the entire entertainment industry. His roles were replaced permanently on both Rick and Morty and Solar Opposites. The same applies to Lemon Grab when he cameoed in Fiona and Cake's Prismo the Wishmaster. But unfortunately, the result here wasn't the best. But I will be as charitable as I can be here. Lemon Grab is voiced by James Monsoon in this clip. She also played the Lemon Carbs in Fiona World. By the time Roiland was outed, he had probably already recorded this scene, meaning that Jinx likely had to dub over the already complete animation. Because it's such a small scene, and Jinx had already voiced two alternate versions of Lemon Grab in Fiona and Cake, I do understand why they chose her to dub over Roiland, and I don't really blame her for her poor performance. 
And I have kind of come around to enjoy it in an ironic sense. And I do like that this sets the precedent that Lemon Grab can be in Adventure Time without Justin Roiland. That being said, I don't really see Lemon Grab being used all too much in the future of Adventure Time. Obviously, the whole Justin Roiland controversy doesn't help matters here, but even that aside, it's not like the show had used him all too much past season 6. His arc was basically completed by the end of the mountain. I'm not really sure what more they even could do with him. Maybe something related to his dynamic with PB, but that's about all I got. Lemon Grab served his function on the show, and it's probably a good thing he did before Royland was outed. I'll admit, I never quite found myself connecting all that much with Lemon Grab as a character. He had his fair share of great comedic moments, absolutely. But due to the extreme absurdism of the character, I never quite found myself capable of taking him seriously. But I think what I've come to realize over the course of making this video is that maybe that's the point. Nobody understands Lemon Grab, and that includes us, the audience. He is entirely isolated in his own suffering. Maybe I'm the bad guy for being so dismissive towards him. All Lemon Grab really wanted was to be loved and understood, with the tragedy being that those who crave love most are the ones who repel it. That being said, I still wouldn't call Lemon Grab, like, one of my favorite characters or anything, and I absolutely understand why a lot of people dislike the guy. But upon making this video, I've definitely gained a newfound sense of appreciation for Lemon Grab. And that's sort of what I like about doing these big character retrospective videos. They get me thinking about these characters in ways that I hadn't before. Whether you love or hate them, Lemon Grab is more than just an annoying voice. Please let me know what your favorite Lemon Grab moment is in the comments. For me, it's gotta be this pie scene from Mystery Dungeon. It's just so ridiculous. Have a good one, Squill out.